bank examiners to take into account how well banks responded to complaints from groups such as minority community activist organizations like ACORN. I <laughs> know those guys too. They're always so happy. Then in December 1995, Cisneros, who was the head of uh, uh, HUD, moved Fannie and Freddie towards a requirement that 42% of the mortgages would now serve low and moderate income families. So in other words, you would, they would have to have almost half of everything on the books there at 8 IG had to be low-income mortgages. Then in 2000, Andrew Cuomo, you know him, he's the guy on TV now saying, we gotta get down to the bottom of this, this is an outrage. Remember that guy? He was, uh, he was Cisneros' uh, successor. He established an even more aggressive goal in 2000. He raised that number to 50% and dramatically hiked Fannie Mae and Freddie Mac's mandates to buy mortgages in underserved neighborhoods for the very, very low income. Uh, he also encouraged them to strongly enter the subprime loan market. Brian, I'm not a scientist like you are, you know, you, one of these brain room guys. A subprime loan market, isn't that the market that we had so much trouble with? It's uh, the credit default swaps that got AIG in trouble. Hmm, that's weird. Uh, they're present in the subprime uh, market, could be significant benefit to lower income families, minorities, and families living in underserved uh, areas. Okay, then in 2000 to 2003, they went from $1.2 billion in subprime mortgages to $15 billion in 2002. And then in 2003, they bought $81 billion in subprime securities. Then they made this flexible product line where you could get a loan for a hundred percent financing all you needed was five hundred dollars isn't that great uncle sam thanks for that uh then they had some scandal you just put scandal up there bigger than ken lay you know uh then barney frank said this on september 10th 2003. we don't have the sound for barney frank now this is 2003. Fannie and Freddie are fundamentally sound, but they are not in, in danger of going under. They're not the best investments these days from the long-term standpoint. Oh no, that, that's the wrong one. This is in 2003. He said, I worry, frankly, that there's tension here. The more people, in my judgment, exaggerate the threat of safety and soundness to Fannie and Freddie. It's kind of like that, except it's a few years earlier when people were saying, gee, don't you think what we're doing here is wrong? No, no. No, no, Mr. Oversight said, please, don't be ridiculous or exaggerate. Then he also said in September 25th, he said, uh, I believe there has been more alarm raised about the potential unsafety and unsoundness than in fact exists. <laughs> then in 2004, President Bush got involved. Uh, he juiced up the prime uh, subprime market and he... Uh, he took that goal from 50% to 56%. So you see, they're building a stable company here. Then we had this last statement uh, from last summer of Barney Frank where he's like, please don't look over here, there's no problem. Then uh, on September 7th of this year, the United States government took control of this out of control company. I mean, look what they've done. The federal government need to take control of them. Then in December 2008, they paid, this is last December, they paid $55 million to some employees. Nobody really said anything about that one. That's weird. And now as the poll numbers are starting to go and people are starting to get more and more angry about our money, what happens? They pay $165 uh, million dollars to the, uh, in the bonuses just as last Friday. And then Barney Frank has the gall to say this. By the way, it does appear to me we're rewarding incompetence. Uh, forget about the legal matter here for a second. These bonuses are going to people who screwed this thing up enormously. Really? Barney, are you getting a bonus? Because the way it looks, it looks like it started here and ended here. It had nothing to do with the company. It had everything to do with the weasels in Washington. Let me tell you, on, on Friday, on Friday, I said, which, which camera are we on? Five? On Friday, this one, this one. Okay. On Friday, I told you on my 912 show, when I had the soldiers there, I, I said, don't you guys have a system where you have to look and be evaluated for everything that you have done after a mission? And I have it, we had it printed up. These are the questions that they ask um, all of the soldiers when they come back. Listen to this and ask yourself this question. Do you think that any of our politicians could actually answer and pass the test that we, have, we, we insist 
that our non-commissioned officers actually have to, uh, to pass. Here it is. They ask the, the uh, supervisor, uh, the officer in charge, they ask him this. Does this person bear true faith and allegiance to the U.S. Constitution, the Army, the unit, and other soldiers? Do you think that they bear actual honesty to the Constitution? Duty. Do they fulfill their obligation? Respect. Do they treat people the way they should be treated? Number four is selfless service. Do they, do they put the welfare of the nation, the army, and the subordinates before their own? Before their own? Honor. Do they live up to all of the values? Integrity. Do they do what is right legally and morally? And the last one is personal courage. And you see if anybody in Washington can actually answer yes to this. Do they face fear, danger, or adversity, physical and moral? These people, they don't do anything. They don't do anything except this. Here, America, have some more cigarettes. I'll be on Leno, you know. By the way, your struggling local newspaper could be the next to get this bailout and, and be involved in this incredible scandal. It might sound innocent, we want to save the newspaper, but I'm going to tell you how it's going to wreck your favorite programs, possibly including this one. Next.